behind you because the header flames are right up in your face, straight up in the air, and you're looking right down the center of a little bitty tunnel trying to drive the car. And they don't go straight. They want to go all over the place. So you drive the funny car with one hand and the fuel altar with two hands. And it's the same car. We just switch bodies, but it's lighter. It doesn't have aerodynamics, so it wants to dart all over the place. But it's a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, there's, there's and the funny the, the funny car is just a lot of fun to drive. When everything's right, they're smooth as can be, and they just go right down the track. Yeah, there's quite a few guys who like to do that uh, fuel altered funny car. You know, change the car over, change the chassis. Yeah. Over. Yeah, I would do it, but they want you to run six O's in the deal in bracket racing. Uh, my view is you shouldn't be bracket racing a car that runs on nitro. They never bracket raced it ever until now. Hmm. It was always whoever got to the finish line first won. So, that's my view on it. So, throughout your... Uh Drag racing career, have you had any accidents or near accidents at all? Uh, I rolled the Carmen Ghia once. Uh, I got the nitro car pretty close to the guardrail. I tore a little bit of the lettering off, but I didn't really hurt it other than that. Other than it banged the floor, broke the windshield. Other than that, no. But I did go upside down in a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia one time. At Bakersfield, in fact. Went over about four times as I remember it counting it as it came up each time that it slid on its on the roll cage because it was a convertible. And then you're upside down thinking, how am I going to get out of this thing without hurting myself? You just let go of the belts and put your hand down real quick because you got armor strengths on and crawl out. But I, I, I didn't get hurt or anything. Yeah, at least you never been in. I've never been in sand trap, and I've never been on fire, but <laughs> we broke two motors with Steve once we had George Sitko's motor, and it broke, and we caught him on fire, and then at the March meet, he caught on fire. So he's been on fire twice in my car, but luckily me, I haven't had that problem yet. At least you guys know these cars are safe when you get rolling around like that. Yeah. All the new stuff they got, it makes it so safe. The The... The belts, the neck restraints, you know, all the, the padding in the seats and, uh, you know, all the fire systems are way better than they were way back when. And, uh, yeah, the diapers, the containment devices, I, I think everything they got made on them is, is way better than they used to be. Everybody always asks, aren't you afraid of catching on fire? I say, no. I'm scared of that guy in the lane next to me. Never drove one. Yeah. That bothers me more than anything. Because you never know what the guy in the other lane is going to do, especially if he comes out of a super calm dragster and you put him in a in a five second car. He's been in a in a eight second car, and all of a sudden he's in a five second car that's a short wheelbase that doesn't drive like his dragster does. You know, it's a little different. Right. And some guys can do it and some guys can't do it. We have people that come in, they build these cars, they're going to tear the whole world up. They go to one or two races and they go, man, I can't believe how much work this thing is and how much money it costs. We're not going to make any money doing it. It's just, just what we do. We have fun and, and uh, it's a lot of work when you get it home after the races. And you can tell the cars that get maintenance versus the cars that don't. You know, some of those guys don't do anything. They just pull it out of the box and try to run it again. We take the tank home here. We take it completely apart, check all the nuts and bolts, check everything, make sure everything's good, put it all the way back together and get it ready for the next race. So it's almost an extra full-time job. Yep. So you got to love what you do. Yep. So, so now, what what would you consider some of the milestones of your drag racing career? Uh, I won one of the good guys' uh, races back in Indy. They had it in Indianapolis. They had a 
the big guy sing, we won that in 07. Uh, 07, yeah, we won that in 07. Ron Cass has drove my car a couple times. He drove my car at the March meet. He drove it down at Tucson. Um, you know who Mike Lewis is? He works for DSR. He's drove it a couple times. In fact, Leah Pruitt drove it one time before she ever had a nitro license. She made a couple of spurts in my car. I've known her since she was, I think, eight or nine years old. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, those are some good milestones to remember. Yeah. So now, yeah, Ron Cass driving the car was a good deal. We had fun with Ron. American Dragster came out and filmed the thing while he was doing it and stuff. It was pretty cool. So now, Bob, are you ready for some fun questions? Sure. If uh, someone were to give you like $200 million and they're like, Hey, Bob, you want to build me a drag race track? Where would you want to build a drag race track? And uh, what kind of features w would you want to put into the track? Uh, man, I don't know where you build one these days is the problem. I definitely wouldn't build it in California. <laughs> too expensive. Yeah, too expensive, too much stuff going on that nobody wants you to have one. But I'd like to have it with a drag strip, kind of like Utah. You know, Utah's got a drag strip, a motocross track, and a, and a, and a, a stock car track. We used to go to a place called Fremont, and we'd race Volkswagens there on Sunday while on Saturday night we'd watch sprint cars. And it's all in the same facility. It seemed to me that was a, a better deal if you could do more than just drag racing at it, you know? Right. Then it's uh, nice to make uh, something to keep kids occupied, you know, if they get bored to leave some, some playground or some kind of little go-kart track or something, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I think that's why you have a motocross track. You know, the kids seem to be into the, doing the motocross more than, more than that, or even a go-kart track. Mm. I like Speedway motorcycles, too, and flat track motorcycles, so I think I'd have something like that, too. So now, Bob, you have any hobbies outside of drag racing? You know, not really. It's like I said, it's about a full-time job. I've got to put all the stuff of going to the river or doing the stuff that I used to do when I was a lot younger. Kind of put that on to the side. And just almost like full-time into racing. So you don't you don't no hunting no fishing nothing like that. Nope, I've I've have never went hunting. Shoot a few squirrels in the backyard now and then <laughs> if they're messing with stuff. Right. But uh, I only fished when I was a little kid. I never fished when I was an adult. I just never did. My two kids did gymnastics and they raced junior dragsters. And, I'll tell you what I am getting ready to do, though. We're getting ready to have our first grandbaby, so that's probably going to change a lot of stuff. Yeah. So now, if if you could do any uh, time traveling, go back in time, would you do anything differently? Uh, I think I would have tried to uh, to do professional drag racing. I just never did. I should have, but I never did. I would have tried to get on a professional team and, and do that. I did it I did it with some friends of mine that had a nitro car, and I traveled around with them and stuff a little bit. But I think when I was really young, I, I could have got, got on a team and toured around and had fun before I decided to settle down and, and, and get married. That's the only thing I would change. I would have done that for a while first. I would have done it as a career, but I would have done it for, you know, maybe seven or eight or nine years. Yeah, I know Chris Bennett's trying to get that top fuel car going. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a hard deal to do. Yeah. Look at the Nitro Holic guy. He did pretty good. 
did at Phoenix. And he's a nostalgia racer. Right. Or he was. Now he's not. Now he's, now he's going to be a big show guy. And they did pretty good. They qualified the second time they got out. They won first round. I mean, what could be better? Yes. So now... Just, just that at my age, I have no desire to drive one of those. It's too much fun doing what I'm doing. So now what's Bob Godfrey's favorite food to eat? My favorite food to eat? I'm pretty partial to Mexican food. Right. Fa favorite beverage? Uh, you know, I mostly drink iced tea. I don't drink beer. I might drink a mixed drink once or twice a year, but that's about it. Most of the time I drink iced tea. What's your favorite music? Old rock and roll. So I also like I also like rhythm and blues. Hmm. So do you have a favorite movie of all time? <laughs> I like Mad Max. There you go. Can't go wrong, Mel Gibson. That's it. Also like old westerns. Anything that John Wayne said, I've probably watched it a hundred times. As, as well as watching Mad Max. Was, <laughs> I have it on video, I'll even watch it sometimes. How about Clint Eastwood's westerns? These are pretty good too. But I'm really partial to John Wayne ones. Yeah. Now what would you say is the fondest memory of your whole drag racing career? So now, Bob, if, if the people that are listening to this interview right now want to find out all the events, what's the best way for them to find your events? Just on the Bob Godfrey Racing, you can look it up on Facebook, you can see it on, uh, or you can look on Instagram, stuff like that. That's the easiest way. Now, how important how important do you think it is for kids to come out to watch drag racing? Uh, it's the only way you're going to keep stuff going. You know, uh, even if they go to import races, you know, you see a lot of kids going to import races more than you know the big show kind of deal. But our nostalgia thing starting to draw a lot of grandfathers with their grandkids, so that's a pretty good deal. I think that's the only way it's going to keep going. Exactly. So now, Bob, you have any final words for the fans out there? If you guys get a chance to go see these nitro cars, these older cars that look like a real car run, you should go do it. You'll really enjoy it. Yeah, get, pull the kids off the video games and dra drag them to the drag strips. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Once they see the nitro cars, that 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 they'll be hooked on them. Yeah, and you can go see us at a reasonable price too. Yeah, very true. Not like the top top field races at HRA. I know it costs so much to get in those. I don't know how you can afford to do it anymore, especially if you got a family. Yeah. Plus, they keep changing the rules all the time, and I can't even keep up with it. I know. Well, I know it seems like every week now they got a new one about crossing over the center line and taking a point the way. Yeah. Well, Bob, I want to thank, thank thank you very much for your time for the interview.